Hi, George. Uh, just so doing our sort of, sort of quick lesson about sort of Moses, the Temple of Moses, and how it points to Jesus, how it points to our redemption, and we sort of start in the sort of Moses, the outer outer court, it was called. And the outer court had the first thing he came to was the altar of sacrifice. And that's where twice a day they sort of sacrificed lambs. When they sacrificed those lambs and the blood would pour out the bottom as a picture of Jesus on the cross. High from the cross, his blood would pour out upon the ground. And then again, you come that the next thing you come to would be the, the brazen altar. And the brazen altar was where the priests sacrificed or sacrificed, washed themselves. They cleansed themselves before they went into the temple. Again, it's a picture of Jesus on the cross and has blood to cleanse us cleanses us from all sin and all unrighteousness. And then we actually go into the sanctuary itself. I think the first thing we come to is the table of showbread. The table the table of showbread every day they had twelve breads that they put upon it. And they were changed every day. And again the, those breads represent the sort of Israel, 12 tribes of Israel, I believe it also represents the 12 disciples. It also represents Jesus. Jesus said, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Again, when you walk past the, that table, the next thing you come to would be the, the golden menorah. The golden menorah is a, it's a picture, it's, it's, like a, it's like a tree, it has seven branches. On the top of each one there was a there was wicks. And the high priest's job was to keep those wicks pointing towards the center branch because the center branch was known as the servant branch. And Jesus, well, when he came, he said, those who want to be the greatest of all must become the servant of all. He was known as the servant king. And everything from that central branch supplied the other branches. And it says we are grafted in to that branch. Jesus has grafted us in and that golden menorah is a picture of that. At the top of each one you had the light. There were seven branches was represented. I believe the seven churches that speaks of in Revelation. I also believe that light. There's actually one point in Scripture where it says the oil ran out. When the, when the oil ran out, the lights didn't go out. They kept lit. I believe that was a again represent representation of the Middle Ages when things became so dark they actually sort of persecuted the church and most church people ended up going to monasteries and sort of staying behind closed they were told to stay behind closed, closed doors they were told not to go out and spread the word but the light was still there and that light eventually came back out again and I believe just that oil running dry but the light staying lit was a picture of the dark ages Again, it's also a picture of the church, that that light will never go out. The church will always be a representation of the light of God. And then we go past that out there and we come to the altar of incense. And again, the altar of incense is where they put incense and offer up prayers daily. Again, that's a picture of Jesus. Jesus is our high priest in the order of Melchizedek. And Jesus and I called us the high priests. We daily give our prayers, and Jesus is at the right hand of God forever, interceding those prayers for us. And then you come to the, the veil, the veil of the curtain. You basically had two cherubim on it, you had one on either side. And again, not believe that two cherubim, the first time we had two cherubim, was an Adam and Eve sinned, the need from the tree of, tree of knowledge of good and evil. And God sent them out of the garden. He put two cherubim to guard and a flaming sword. And I believe again that's a representation of the way back to the Garden of Eden. It's shown a picture how Jesus Christ is the way back to the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden is where Adam and Eve walked in the presence of God. I believe that's showing the way that those cherubim when they opened that up. You then had the Ark of the Covenant. And again you had another two Cherubim there. I believe that's just a picture of God saying the way back to the Garden of Eden. The way past the Cherubim. 
So he's Jesus. Jesus says, I am the word. And the word is represented by a sword. I believe that flame and sword is the word of God. And we accept Jesus as our saviour. That is our way back to the Garden of Eden. That is our way back in the very presence of God. Because the Ark of the Covenant which sat there was act was acted as the very presence of God. It was called the mercy seat. And there was times in the Bible that talks about uh, I think the Philistines had captured it one time and then when the Israelites got it back again they opened the top of the mercy took the top of the mercy seat off. And they looked to see if there was three things in inside the Ark of the Covenant. That was the Ten Commandments, orange rod, and a jar of manna. And I looked to see if those things were there. And it says that they got struck 50,000 of them dead. And that may seem very, sometimes you look at it, may think that seems very cruel. But there was a whole point there. The whole point there was because they had been captured by the Philistines, the Israelites, the high priests, they hadn't sprinkled that Ark of the Covenant with blood. And it's the covering of blood of Jesus on the cross that sanctifies us. If you try to enter God's presence without the covering of the blood, you're condemned under, under the law, under the old law, the laws of the Ten Commandments that God set out. The only thing that saves us is the blood of Jesus. You know, God looks down from heaven to eye at us. He doesn't see this flesh and bones. He sees us through the eyes of Jesus. He sees us through the covering of the blood. That we are just like Jesus. We're exactly like Jesus because of Jesus' blood. Nothing that we've done. But everything that he did, that sacrifice. And I think that... The three things in the the art. So you, you have the Ten Commandments, which rep represented the Word of God, the Law of God. And those laws were read out to give us some kind of morality. You know, even look today's world where mankind is led by laws, you know, I shall not murder. And there's different sentences for murder, different sentences for theft, different sentences for rape. God also laid down those laws to keep man morally right before him. And we couldn't keep those laws, and even those they couldn't keep those laws. The only thing that could keep break those laws was Jesus when he spread, shed his blood. You know, but now Jesus actually says that he came not to abolish the law, but to fulfill the law. In other words, the only way we could fulfill that law and live by it was by being covered by his blood. Outside of that, we can never fulfill those laws. We can never stand by them. We can never live by them. And even today, you see the mess the words in today and how mankind can't live even by man's laws, let alone God's laws. So Jesus Christ came on that Ark of the Covenant when it was sprinkled with the blood. It was an atonement. The Ark was also called the Atonement. It's called the mercy seat. And here, uh, just find in, in the import. And as I said, covering the ark was golden cap called the mercy seat or caparet. And this is related to the word kippur or yom kippur, as in the Jews celebrate the day of yom kippur, the day of atonement. It's actually more than the name was in the mercy seat. The name was the atonement seat. It's a place where God. Jesus' has blood atoned for our sins and for our transgressions when we broke the law. And again, you look in that if Ten Commandments, which was God's law, which you tried to live by and we couldn't, you then had orange rod, you had orange rod, remember in Egypt? And when they were in Egypt, they went before Pharaoh and they threw the rod down. Moses gave the rod the arm, he threw it down and it turned, it turned, into, a, turned into a snake. But the Egyptians, the magicians threw two of theirs down and they turned into snakes, but Aaron's rod eat their snakes. You know, so it was a sign of the miraculous. 
And again, it's also a sign how the high priest was chosen, how Aaron was chosen. There was a debate one time about why Aaron should be the high priest, and God told him to lay down those other high, those other priests lay down your rod, and in the morning, whichever one buds, will be the high priest. And the, the morning, Aaron's rod had budded, it had flowers on it, it had almond blossoms on it. And again, that's just a picture of the miraculous, it's a picture of we're called saints. We're called high priest. Jesus says we're a high priest in the order of Melchizedek, like he is. And high priest, and that shepherd staff that he threw down, just blossom as a picture of us when we're filled with the Holy Spirit. How we're supposed to blossom, how we're supposed to be fruitful. And again, I have the picture of the, the manna in the golden pot, and again, I, Manna is sort of basically represents our salvation. You actually look at Manna today, the nearest thing we have to it today is cordamon. And you see cordamon has actually the shell or shell of it. It almost has stripes on it, representing the stripes that Jesus took for us. But when you actually crush this up, it actually produces oil. Again, it's not about oil of the Holy Spirit flow. Again, that oil was used to make bread. Again, it comes right back to the point where Jesus said, I am the bread of life. And again, the tablets represent our sanctification. You know what you say again, just because God made those laws as a moral structure for us to live by. So we would have life and not death, but we couldn't live by those laws. It took the sacrifice of Jesus to cover it. That we could live. Jesus said that, eh, choose life. Choose who you serve, choose life. And again, if they roar the rod of Aaron, when he bit represents and again the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit and that produces fruit. You blossom, you start to blossom, you start to produce fruit. And again, as you say, just see that whole picture of how even from the time of Moses. That the Lord was basically showing us, you know, this is the way back. This is the way back to the Garden of Eden. You had to pass through these curtains, through these, past these cherubim. You know, I think it actually talks in uh, the vision of Ezekiel, it talks about uh, the vision he had. He says, I've seen four cherubim carrying God. You know, he passed through these two cherubim, there's another two cherubim on the Ark of the Covenant, and it's basically saying, you do that, you've entered into the very presence of God, because these cherubim continually carried the presence of God wherever God went. And again, you have to pass through them by the blood of Jesus back into the Garden of Eden, those cherubim were guarding it. The only way those cherubim would part was when you knew that that sword, that word of God, and you knew that, that the cross and the blood shed that Jesus shed upon us was our salvation, it was for our atonement. And that is the only way back into the Garden of Eden. It's the way back into the presence of God. Where this old flesh will be left behind and we will be covered once again in the glory of God. We'll, have a, we'll be fitted with robes of righteousness. But we were covered in the glory. I believe that's how Adam and Eve were before the fall. They were covered in God's glory. Just that glory of God radiating from us. I believe God right through, from the start from Moses, right till today, he's shown us the only means back in the Garden of Eden is through Jesus Christ. It's through the blood, the atonement, that Jesus Christ sacrificed and fell forward on the cross. Without that, we cannot come into his presence. We just thank God today that he allowed us to come into his presence. That he went to the cross. That we may be redeemed, may we be, may be forgiven. And he's made a way back to the presence of the Father. As he has it's just a very quick sort of, quick lesson, an awful lot more than that. But that was just a very sort of, sort of quick lesson about how the tabernacle of Moses has shown us the way back into the presence of God, the way back into the Garden of Eden.
to everything that Jesus done upon the cross. All right. All right. Bye, everyone.